As you saw in the movie that introduces the basics of sequence diagrams, the objects, or participants, in a sequence diagram send messages to each other. There are a number of different kinds of messages that you can represent in a sequence diagram, and that's what this movie is about. You show a message in a sequence diagram with an arrow that passes from the lifeline of the sending object to the lifeline of the receiving object or participant. And you label the arrow so that the viewer of your diagram knows what the message is. So, if the arrow looks like this, a solid line with a triangular head, it represents a synchronous message. And so this might be, for example, a method call that needs to wait for a reply before this object uh, can go on to do something else. So the solid line arrow with the triangular filled in head is represents a synchronous message. So we said that we need a return message for that and we show a return message like this. And let's a return message is a dashed line arrow with a stick style head that points from the object sending the return message to the object receiving the return message. So anytime you show a synchronous message, you're going to need to show some kind of return message because this object is waiting for the return message before it can proceed. So you might notice that the return message arrow looks like the dependency arrow of other kinds of diagrams, and they're not the same thing. So don't confuse the two. In a sequence diagram, this style of arrow always represents a return message. If you are showing an asynchronous message, one where this object doesn't have to wait for a reply before it can do other things, it looks like this kind of arrow right here, a solid line, with a stick style arrowhead. An object can send a message to itself, as when one method calls another method that belongs to the same object, and you show a self message like this. The arrow returns to the same lifeline from which it emerged. Um, here's the activation bar, and that represents a self message. A self message can also show a recursive call of an operation, and that looks like this. See, the recursive message looks very similar to the self message, except it points to a second activation bar that is on top of uh, the initial activation bar. So if you have that extra little rectangle, you're dealing with a recursive message, and if it's not there, it's just a self message, the object sending a message to itself. Also, messages can be found, and this is how you show a found message. And what a found message is, is a message that comes from a sender that's either unknown or that's not shown in this current diagram. So a found message comes either from some unknown source outside the system or from a source that a sender that's not part of this particular diagram. Conversely, uh, messages can be lost, and you show a lost message like this. The arrow points from the lifeline of the sender of the message to a filled in circle, and a lost message happens when the message goes to a recipient that's not an object or a participant in this diagram. So again, if it goes outside of the system or the part of the system that we're showing in this sequence diagram, then that's a lost message. So here's an example of how a sequence diagram can show messages moving from one participant to another. And this is simply a situation where a student wants to use the registrar system to get grades. Notice that a participant in a sequence diagram can be an actor, and you can show that as I did here by labeling the participant with the actor stereotype, 
or you can also use the actor stick figure. Actor stick figures can have lifelines in sequence diagrams. So our actor sends a message to the registrar system and see we've labeled the message here get grades. The registrar system needs to get security clearance before they can return grades to the actor. So they pass a message to the security system get security clearance. The security system returns clearance to the registrar system and then the registrar system is able to return current grades to the student. So you see these are both examples of synchronous messages. The student waits for a return from the registrar system. The registrar system sends a message, waits for a reply, uh, and this just gives you a very simple example of how a se sequence diagram shows the messages that pass from one participant to another until you get to the end of the interaction. Notice that this sequence diagram shows a use case for the registrar system. This would be the get grades use case with the student as the primary actor. In a later movie we'll talk about how sequence diagrams can help to bring use cases to life.